President Trump on the campaign trail. The president will hold a Make America Great Again rally tonight in Pennsylvania's coal country. He hopes to make a push for GOP Senate candidate Lou Barletta after vowing to step up his campaign game ahead of the midterms. I am going to work very hard. I'll go six or seven days a week when we're 60 days out. And I will be campaigning for all of these great people that do have a difficult race. And uh, we think we're going to bring them over the line. This comes as former President Barack Obama jumps back into the political ring. He says he's giving 81 Democratic endorsements for the 2018 elections. Joining me now to discuss is former Hillary Clinton advisor and Blueprint Strategy CEO Antoine Seawright, along with former Trump surrogate and conservative columnist Gina Loudon. Good to see you both. Thank you so much for joining us. Let's first talk about, about the midterm elections. What do you think will be the driving issues before we get into who's basically going to be uh, going to be campaigning? What are the driving issues in, in, in terms of what gets voters out? Antoine, what do you, why don't you just kick us off here? Well, I think the most important thing, what we've seen from a number of polls, is going to be health care, particularly in places like the Rust Belt, where uh, essentially this president has had an all-out assault um, on health care and access to affordable quality health care. And I think that will be the number one issue going into the midterm elections for a lot of voters, whether you're Democrat or Republican. When people walk into hospitals in this country, uh, the receptionists do not ask whether they're Democrat, Republican. They want to know simply how can we help you. And for some, the opportunity to walk into a health care facility right. in this country has ta been taken away because of this president's obsessed with being able to uh, take away the Affordable Care Act and what the Affordable Care Act means for a lot of voters. Yeah, part, That's part why of the Connor issue in terms of one in Pennsylvania. But part of the issue in terms of health care was the expense of uh, certainly Obamacare on on business, um, forcing the premiums to go up so much and, and, and also impacting individuals. That's one reason, Gina Loudon, that we did see economic growth under 2 percent under President Obama for so long. Right. And we've seen all of that change now. And the beautiful difference here is that under President Trump, people can actually afford to get private health care and go to their own doctors again, which is what Americans have been screaming for ever since Obama took all of those choices away. So, so do but you think health care is going to be the number be... one issue, Gina, as Antoine has just Not said? Not at all. No. This no, the economy, yes, as it relates to health care, perhaps a little bit. But th this, this election is very easy <laughs> for voters. They get to choose between Republicans who want to tighten our borders, who want to uh, have national security in place that this president has established, that want a thriving economy, versus the Democrats who want higher crime, open borders, and higher taxes. I think when you Gina, throw health care into that mix as Democrats, excuse me, I let you finish. I think when you throw health care into that mix as the Democrats want to, people understand that that means more taxes because they're talking about taxing people more, regulating businesses more, and taking away the thriving economy that is hitting people's pocketbooks in a good way right now. It is going to be hard to argue, Gina. Antoine, that you know, you're know you not seeing a better environment. 4.1% economic growth. We just saw the GDP last week, and we were talking about you know unemployment at some of the lowest levels we've ever seen. Well, the bottom line is 4% 4, 4 GDP happened at least, I think, five times under <laughs> President Obama. But it's too early in the morning for Gina to get away with the Republican talking points. The bottom line is for you to continue to go on TV and all of your mediums to say that Democrats want open borders is just a disgrace and it's unfortunate because it's not Well, they want to abolish ICE, right? What Do they want to abolish what ICE? Democrat, what, what, what Democrats want is, com is comprehensive immigration reform. We want to tighten up border security. The bottom line is your president and your Congress refused to to negotiate in a bipartisan way to get things done, and they have failed the American people on the issue of immigration. And now you want to rehearse the RNC talking points about Democrats want open borders, and that's just factually not true. So it, I wish that were true, Antoine, but you're, you, it's your party that has not come to the table. The president has repeatedly extended his true. hand. And I would think that Democrats would be celebrating because, look, for the, for the disadvantaged groups that the Democrats purport to have always wanted to help, like the black population, like Hispanics, like women, it is this president that indeed has established record low Gina. unemployment for these groups. And now these groups can afford to enjoy their lives. You should be celebrating. You should be joining and you should be helping this president Gina, accomplish. Gina, the, I'm is the most Gina, powerful economics we've seen in our lifetimes. 
Gina, I'm going to fact check you in real time. Keep in mind it was Durbin and Graham who sat down with this president per his request to do comprehensive immigration reform, and he rejected the notion it yeah, was McCain and a few others. Yeah, but he did come out with a, a plan. Others. He came out with a plan, though, no, no, Antoine, let, later, let, and let the Democrats finish, said, let, no, let they wanted to make it, let, they wanted let, to make let, it a, let, a camp. Let me finish my thought. Yeah. Let me finish my thought. Sure. It was Graham and Durbin, then it was McCain and a few others in a bipartisan way that came to this president and said, we want to do immigration in a bipartisan way. We do not want a patchwork job. He rejected it on a number of occasions. So to say that it's the Democrats' fault for not wanting to do immigration would be just a lie before 9 a.m. on national no, TV. No, no, but he did come back and, and, and give them the plan basically even better than they wanted, and then they rejected it. And it was a clear turn toward, we're going to deal with this in November. I mean, the Democrats do, didn't want to deal with it earlier this year. They wanted to be um, a, a, a midterm elections issue. Okay, maybe you didn't hear what I just said, but we'll, we'll continue, Maria. <laughs> you want to talk about the president uh, being well, in Well, I think, Antoine, tonight? if we want to talk about lies, we should talk about you saying that Obama's GDP was ever over 4%. That is not true. His GDP was never even hit 3%, so that's not but, true. Well, so I'm not sure we're going to do that. It averaged under 2% for the eight years, Antoine. That's a fact. No, here's the thing. It hit it hit over four percent, and there was at least five occasions where it. I think, I'm sorry, it hit four percent on a number of occasions. It hit five percent at least on one occasion. You should probably do your homework on that on that regard, Gina. No, that's it's not true. Not true. It's not true, Antoine. It, it averaged under two percent. It is true. Yeah. I didn't say average. We were, I said we were it in hit. the middle of a financial average. crisis as soon as President Obama took office, and things got worse. And that's one of the reasons it, because it did, of the financial there crisis. Were, you could, this is, very, this is factually true. President Obama's GDP did hit 4% during his presidency, yeah. more than one occasion. Let me, let me turn to the issue of, of Twitter shadow banning and this controversy. Twitter CEO Jack Dorsey sat down with Fox News contributor Guy Benson, explaining how he understands why conservatives are skeptical of his platform. Listen to this. Got to get your reaction. We have folks who are at various points in the political spectrum, and they don't feel comfortable today bringing up certain issues or their viewpoints on certain issues. And I don't believe that's acceptable. It's not acceptable for us to create a culture like that, especially when we're creating a service where we are trying to enable to hear from every perspective, to try to bring people together across the spectrum. Gina, your reaction to that? Well, I would say that uh, Twitter feels probably like it has to be somewhat deferential because uh, the president has essentially made them a major news source uh, that they really never were before. But this sounds like a lot of doublespeak to me. I hope it's true. I would love to take him at his word. But I've seen shadow banning of conservatives across the board. In fact, I still can't get the president to drop down on my Twitter. So I'm not sure what's going on there, but I don't trust it. Uh, what, what about you, Antoine? Your thoughts on what's been taking place in terms of technology and some of these charges that social media is, in fact, censoring conservative views? The one thing I care about as it relates to social media is protecting our democracy. What we do know between Facebook and Twitter, Russians have used that as a vehicle to penetrate the hearts and minds of voters in this country. Uh, I call it an all-out assault on our democracy. And so I hope that whether it's Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, or whatever social media um, exists in our, de in our democracy, I hope we use it as a way to be a learning tool versus a tool to, uh, to spread false information. All right, we will leave it there. Antoine Seawright and Gina Loudon, good to see you both. Thanks very much.